Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and if you missed the previous videos in this series, I'll put a link down in the description below. All right, folks, time to get an update out here at the pond. It is a beautiful day out here. This is probably the first calm day we've had all spring. As most of you have probably experienced, it's been blowing 20 miles an hour plus. But you can see those groups of school and shad out there. And if you missed last week's video, we put 10,000 threadfin shad out, and they're a schooling type fish. So on calm days, you'll see them up there near the surface, schooling and eating. You can even see some right here in the shallow end. So we've got a healthy population of bait fish, fathead minnows, threadfin shad, and bluegills. So one of the main focuses of today's video is gonna be vegetation. And we'll take a quick look at our backyard pond to talk about the different types of vegetation. And there are basically three different types, emergent, submerged, and floating. And this is an example of emergent. Its roots are down in the water, but a majority of the plant is above water. And then you also have floating plants like this one or lily pads. So there's one big problem with vegetation, and it's that no matter what type of plant it is, they all grow and spread. And some of them spread more rapidly than others. Now with a small scale pond like this one in the backyard, you can control that growth but every pond biologist that I talked to about our five acre pond said the same thing, and that's do not add any vegetation. And that's because they've seen some of the major problems that it can cause, and you'll have to go in and add poison to the water to kind of help control the vegetation. And especially with submerged vegetation, it's hard to see it, so it's really hard to keep it in check. But there's some obvious benefits with vegetation, like helping out with erosion and providing those newly hatched fish with a place to hide so they can grow up. So after discussing it with the biologist, if there is one type of vegetation you want to add, that would be the emergent vegetation that you put in the shallow water, and this makes it easier to see it and control it. So I took a trip to one of our local aquatic shops called Streets to see what type they have. But when I was checking out the plants that they have for sale, obviously all the floating plants like lily pads are still a few weeks out. So I wanted to see what they had in their shallow water selection. And they had a few different options. This first one was an iris, and that's what we also have in the backyard pond. And then we also have this leafy umbrella style in our pond, which I know from personal experience grows rapidly, and we're definitely not putting that in. So it's still early in the year, and the selections are small. So I think our best bet is going to be to get some of our plants out of the backyard pond and move them over. So now it's time to go swimming with the fishies. Bluegills sometimes get a little spooked, but the bass don't seem to mind much. You can see Bonnie's gotten big. And that's also our biggest bluegill we call Jekyll. So we're going to get some of this big iris plant, and I'm going to clean some of the weeds out from last year. And here's an underwater look at the root system. It doesn't necessarily have to be in gravel or dirt. Some of these roots just grow freely underwater. All right, now you can see we got a, kind of an isolated section right here. I'm gonna try to just get from, basically from there over. We finally got it. Perfect root ball, still intact. All right. Dead leaves off. We've got a lily pad in there. See, those will be growing up here in about another two to three weeks. Don't know anything about water spiders. They don't make over there. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's our good pile. We're taking out to the pond. That's our trash pile. And there's a look at the pond. I dirtied up the water, but. Definitely gonna make things a lot better for all the fish. So it's time for today's cookout, and if you live in a remote location like me, you should check out Butcher Box. They provide high quality meats and seafood to your doorstep every month, and they've got a really good promotion going on right now. If you sign up, you'll get two pounds of 100% grass fed beef in every box for the lifetime of the membership. That's a lot of beef and definitely a good deal. So today we're gonna be cooking some shrimp and steaks, and I'm gonna give you a quick tip on my favorite way to grill shrimp. So it's very simple. You just mix in some parsley and minced garlic in a bowl of butter. And I like to apply it every couple of minutes while they're on the grill. All right, we got Liz's tartar sauce recipe. We got pickled relish, mayo, 
onions and bell pepper, and then some cabbage. So folks, I would highly recommend Butcher Box, and I put a link down in the description below for that great deal of getting two pounds of ground beef for life. All right, folks, time to do a little fishing out here at the pond. So you can walk along the bank and see all the fathead minnows and threadfin shad, but I haven't been able to see any of the bluegills. And even after we first put them in, they would stay down there on the bottom, so you couldn't get a good look at them. So I'm kind of interested to see if they're eating the bluegill food or not and growing it all. So I want to catch a couple of them just to see what their size looks like. So I just got a little piece of white bread. I'm gonna put it on a bobber, see if we can catch one or two. I can almost guarantee you if they're not here at the dock, they'll be out there at the throne. They're biting it. <laughs> About to catch the first fish out of the pond. He's pulling it under now. Almost had him. Got him. Wow. Look at that. That is unbelievable. That he got that big. I mean, that is incredible. I had no idea that these fish would be that big. All right. Let me put him back in. That's the biggest one I caught so far, and man, she looks pregnant or either she's been eating a lot, but man, they have grown a ton in just a short amount of time. Sarah heard that the gills are biting, so she loaded up the rod and reel, ready to go catch them. All right, Sarah, good job. You got him. <laughs> you caught one. Good job. Keep it? What you want to do with him if you keep it? We could, uh, can't we eat him? <laughs> you want to eat him? I think we're going to throw him back and let him grow. We Look how big his belly him. is. Wow. wow, he's been eating a lot, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. All right, tell him bye-bye. Bye. He's going to grow a little bigger. So I got another rare daylight clip of both of the owls. This is Hooter and Al Capone, and I started to get a little bit worried about the one on the right. Because it was acting like it was injured, and I couldn't really tell what it was doing. But then after a while, I'm pretty convinced that it was just taking a dirt bath. And this went on and on and on. Now that's a pretty cool shot of the owl shaking the dust off. Got the cattle egrets hanging out with us today. So what I'm going to do is we're going to be putting some of this vegetation in the pond. I'm going to focus on the shallow areas and really just working on the bank vegetation so we can kind of add some contrast to these banks and also give the little fish a spot to hide out. But I'm gonna be looking for some flat bottoms because what I decided to do is we're gonna get some of these little small pans here and I'm gonna use some of this leftover pea gravel that I had. And so hopefully if we put the plants inside of that and then pea gravel around the roots, that'll kind of keep them contained and then we can add some of that down these pond banks and then do it just a little bit at a time. We'll start off with a little bit today and if it looks good and works out good, we may add some more here in the future. So I was just walking the banks looking for a good spot to put the new plants and I came across this looks like tiny little vegetation I mean, it looks like microscopic vegetation. I'm not really sure what that is, but it definitely looks like it is multiplying really fast. And that's one of the things I'm kind of worried about. I don't know. If you guys know what that is, leave a comment down below. That's why we're sticking with the big plants for now. So at least we can see them. And if it starts getting out of control, we can take care of it before it becomes a problem. All right, I got my tubs loaded up with gravel. Got the plants over here. The first spot I'm going to put them is right there where all the bait fish like to join up right here in the corner of this pond this is still kind of an unfinished project this is where all the water enters the pond right here we had some erosion back in the day so i put some gravel down 
I got to go back in there with a little bit more gravel to fill that in. And so the plants right here will also help with that erosion. All right, first one went in pretty smooth. Let's add a couple more to that same bucket. Got the girls out here helping me with the plants. Sarah's over there mostly swimming. But we came back with a different approach. We put the plants in and then put the rocks on top. That seems to help out. So this is pretty interesting. I've been walking the pond bank since we put the shad in and I've started noticing these tiny fish that are hatchling size. And the more and more I saw of them, I'm 100% convinced now that some of the fish spawned most likely the fathead minnows, which is great news because they're just increasing the bait fish in the pond. So I wanted to get an underwater shot to get a little bit closer look. But my best guess is these are fathead minnows. All right, folks, out here at the pond, gonna do a little feeding. If you've never seen our previous videos, we get a thousand golden shiners shipped in from Arkansas. They overnight them. Every one of them will be alive. You can check them out at Anderson Minnow Farm. All right, we got them acclimated here, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple in before we dump them in, see if we can get some topwater shots. Got him. That was a good one. <laughs> the bluegill got one. Ranger came out and got him one. So I was cutting grass and I ran this little snake up onto the big pile of lime we have here. And we're going to try this again. So last week I showed a snake in the video that I thought was a rat snake. But after all the feedback I got from you guys, it was most likely not. We're going to get a really good close up on this one. And again, my vote is still a rat snake. Here's a picture I pulled up online of a rat snake. And to me, they're identical. But I'm definitely not a snake expert. So leave your comments down below on what type of snake you think it is. Nice view out here on the pond. Except I'm sitting in the lawnmower, just about sunk it. Got right there on that clay hill and started sliding down. There wasn't nothing I could do. Luckily, we didn't go all the way into the pond. Barely kept the motor out of the water, so that's good. Close call, trying to figure out how to cut these banks. Good thing Liz was here today with the tractor. I might have been in a bind. So speaking of cutting grass, all of our winter ryegrass has died on Alcatraz Island. So I'm going to go through and weed eat it. Because about a month ago, I went through and planted Bermuda grass. And it is starting to pop up. So hopefully when I cut all this taller grass down, it'll give it some sunshine. And we'll have a nice green grassy island again. A real quick update on our two ducks, Allie and Bam Bam. We're looking for duck eggs to hatch any day now. You can see she's built her a nest and she rarely gets off of it. But there's a bunch of eggs in there and hopefully we'll have some little ducklings soon. All right, so we're gonna go back to setting up the squirrel picnic table. And you guys have seen us do this in the past. We've got sunflower seeds, pecans, pistachios, peanuts, and Brazil nuts. Got the game cam set up, so let's see what comes out to eat tonight. All right, first up we got the one we call George Jones, the possum. And then next, a gigantic armadillo. And then George headed back to bed to get some sleep. And some birds out enjoying the sunrise. And a peanut thief. But look at these two love birds sharing their seeds. Never seen that before. And the bandit has arrived. And I knew we'd have a little mouse before the night was over. And the raccoon's back to finish everything off. <laughs> and this is his way of shaking the camera to let me know the peanuts are gone and they need a refill. 
And every morning, like clockwork, the blue heron shows up to the pond to snack on those shad that we put in. But one really interesting thing I keep finding is that he eats at night. This is just past midnight, and he's strolling the banks. I just honestly never knew they would hunt that much at night. They must have some pretty good night vision. But here's one of the birds I definitely don't want around called a cormorant. They eat bass and every kind of fish they can fit in their mouth. And a flock of them can wipe the pond out. So hopefully he'll move along. And we got one other interesting wildlife clip here. This is the hawk that's been hanging out. And I believe he's doing a little hunting right here. He's using that tall grass. And this is one of our feeding areas that the doves fly in. And one just flew in. Here's his chance. And he missed it. Better luck next time. Now it's time to feed Mr. Moby. All right, folks, that is going to wrap up this video. Our plan is to lime the pond next week, and then the bass will be coming a week or two after that. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot of cool things coming up, but I hope you all enjoyed this video, and we will see you all next time.